Hey, today we're talking about programming fonts, why they matter, and some of my favorites. We're also gonna talk about ligatures. Hey everybody, thanks for being here. I recently changed the font I was using in my editor and some of you noticed and some of you liked it and some of you wanted to know what it was and some of you were confused by it. And so all of these things come together. I just thought we should talk about fonts and programming fonts. Now, just to be upfront with everybody, I'm a serious type nerd. I really have that to thank my friend and lab mate, Ben Ransford, who got me into type and typography back when we were both in grad school at UMass. But the point is, is that I maybe think more about type than is probably healthy, at least when it comes to what fonts I use. But that said, I was recently talking to a bunch of new programmers and I mentioned something about editor fonts and their responses made me think we should probably talk about it. Now, this is a topic that I know there are gonna be opinions, probably some strong opinions. Be sure to let me know down in the comments if you have a favorite font, a favorite typeface for programming. I'd love to hear about it. Maybe you can add one or two to my list. But now let's get into it. What makes a good programming font and why does any of this matter? Because you know you've got a million fonts to look at. You can choose from all these different fonts. There's just a ton to look at. Which one is the right one for you? Who knows? The most obvious thing you wanna look for when you are picking a programming programming font is you want a monospace or fixed width font. That's this fixed width option right here. Now the whole idea with fixed width fonts like Courier or Courier New is that every symbol takes up the same width. It's the same amount of space. So it's fixed width. Basically every character is the same width, which is different from most of the rest of the fonts that we use. Now, why does that matter? Well, let's just look at the following code. Now using a monospace font and one of the variable space fonts that we use for just about everything else, you see it? Some new programmers just think that programmers just like to look all retro, like we're on a typewriter. And that may be true for some of you out there, but it's not the reason that we all use monospace fonts. Monospace fonts just help everything line up nicely. So without that, as you notice over here, the code quickly becomes really hard to visually parse and that's going to slow you down a lot. Okay, so now that we're just looking at monospaced fonts, we've narrowed the list down considerably. You only have so many on my machine to choose from. So at this point, in my opinion, it's just my opinion, but at this point, I think it's all about clarity. If you're like me, you're looking at code a lot and anything that a font can do to make your job easier is going to be wonderfully welcome. So anyone designing a good programming font is going for readability and clarity. Things like making sure that zeros look different from capital O's, because we all know we've made that mistake before. And of course, like all typography decisions, there's also a lot of personal preference here. So let's look at a few of my recent favorites. And for this, I'm gonna use programmingfonts.org. It's just a great website for exploring different fonts because it's gonna be a lot faster for me to show you how these fonts look than it would be for me to keep changing fonts in my editor. Okay, so let's start with some old reliables. These are fonts that I've used over the years. I still think they're great. Okay, so the first one I'm gonna look at is Source Code Pro. It's based on Adobe's free open source Source Sans Pro font, which is another great typeface, just not for programming. And it's one that I've used a lot over the years. I think it's easy on the eyes. It's very clear. And my only complaint really is that the characters feel a little wide to me, like it's being stretched out a little bit horizontally. Functionally, it's fine, it's great. Maybe it limits how much code I can get on the line before it wraps. But as you're gonna see in a minute, I don't know that the characters are really that wide. They just look wide, they feel wide. So that's really aesthetically my only complaint. The second one that was my go-to that I've used for years is Inconsolata. And that's this one right here by Ralph Le Bean, maybe, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, or the Inconsolata G font that was sort of inspired. It's a derivative of Inconsolata. Now, I like the G version a bit better. It feels a little bit rounder and softer. I don't know, it's just easier to read. It flows better. Both are very readable. It's interesting that it's actually not any narrower than Source Code Pro if you compare these side by side, but the letter forms are a tad taller, so it doesn't feel quite as stretched. So personally, again, just my opinion, I think it's a small but welcome improvement. So I actually like Inconsolata G a little bit better than Source Code Pro for my editors. Now, those were my old reliables for a long time though, and I still like them. I think they're great options for anyone looking for a standard coding font. But over the last few months, I've been playing around with a few others, and the three that I've been playing with lately are Cascadia Code, Fira Code, and JetBrains Mono. Okay, let me take a look at these. So we've got Cascadia Code right here, Fira code down here and JetBrains Mono, okay? These three have a lot in common. In fact, that's one reason why I'm listing them all together. I'm having a hard time deciding on my favorite. I find all three of them to be super readable. And one thing I really like is that they add ligatures, which is something that a few of you have been confused about. So a ligature is basically a symbol like you see up here that replaces other symbols under certain conditions. 
So you've probably seen these in other fonts outside of programming, though you probably haven't noticed them. For example, a lot of fonts use ligatures when an F and an I show up together. If they don't, it can look really ugly like this. So you can see right here, the F, the top of the F is coming over, looking like it's about to crash into the dot on top of the I. On the other hand, a lot of fonts replace this with a ligature, as you can see over here. So whenever an F and an I come together, they replace it with a better looking symbol that just looks cleaner. It doesn't look like the F is gonna crash into the I. It looks like it was designed to be that way. So in our programming fonts, we do the same thing, but we're not usually going for aesthetic beauty, although that's nice but we're really trying to improve, hopefully, clarity. So you see this over here with JetBrains Mono. If I type a hyphen and then a greater than sign, it replaces it with this arrow symbol, which is cool, but the downside, of course, is if you don't realize what's going on, you might be sitting there, as some of you were when you watched one of my videos, saying, wait, how do I type an arrow? Or how do I type a three-layered long equal sign? Or how about a greater than or equal sign, like this? Now, these are all ligatures, and this has definitely confused some new folks out there. I'm sorry for that confusion, but the upside of it is that, in my opinion, these ligatures make these different operations look more distinctive and easier for me to visually parse. So that means that I make fewer silly mistakes and I can understand code more quickly when I look at it right out of the box. I just look at this code and I can see these things differently. It just happens much faster and I love that. So finally, I just wanna mention two other fonts that I'm meaning to look into. I've started, but I haven't really decided if I like them or not. So the first one is Input by David Jonathan Ross. It has some nice features. It's also very readable. It doesn't have ligatures, but it seems like a really solid coding font. So I'm interested. The other is, if we scroll down here to the bottom, is Victor. I'm still trying to decide if I like Victor's use of cursive mixed in with the code. It definitely gives your code a quirky feel to it. I'm just trying to decide if it's useful. So let me know in the comments if you think it's useful. But folks, those are my font picks, at least for 2021. We'll see what comes out in the next year. But I hope this gives you some good options. I hope this maybe even gives you some clarity, helps you get more readable code in your editor. Let me know what your favorite fonts are down in the comments. Of course, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss my next video. And until then, happy coding and I'll see you later.